first of all, I thank the Lord for the opportunity to be here. It's true we have been discussing this for a while, uh, but uh, I mean, today is the day that the Lord appointed we are going to do it. We are here and we thank him for the opportunity we've had to do this. Uh, I want to thank you, Bishop Karioki, uh, for being persistent and focused on this. We have discussed this matter for quite a while. Uh, to bring it to fruition, together with the clergy that you've worked with, uh, I want to sincerely thank you for the effort that you have made. Uh, my brother, our governor for Nyandarwa, uh, Mr. Kimemia, I am one of the very few people who are fortunate to have worked with you and I've known you for a very long time. I know how focused and committed you are to the service of your people and we can see in the work that has happened here. It is true, as you have said, I've been here several times in Nyandarwa, uh, in most cases sent uh, by His Excellency, our president, to to do the job that he has given me to do, namely look after national government projects and build a strong uh, collaboration between county and national governments to deliver on what needs to be done. And then there are two things actually that are bothering me about Nyandarwa and by the grace of God, I am going to uh, mobilize my colleagues so that we see that we actually do something about them because I honestly think we should get the dream of um, starting a university campus in Nyandarwa to come through. Um, I'll sit down with my colleague, uh, Professor Magoa, and my two colleagues who are here. We'll discuss this matter at the cabinet level and see what we can do. Because this thing has been on the cards for a very long time. The desire and the drive of the community is huge. And sometimes, even within the constraints of our budgetary issues and programming, uh, policy needs to be responsive to need and to the things that happen. So we will discuss the matter. The second other issue is that of the, the, the stadium. I, I think that given the history of Nyandarwa and the history of this country, it would be befitting, this is my honest view, that uh, one of the grand finale of the president's um, public meetings happens at Nyandarwa Stadium. And uh, I will work with my colleagues, including Zach and the others, to see how we can drive this to get to the status like we did for Wanguru Stadium in Kirinyaga the other day where we uh, held meetings. These things are possible and they can be done. Uh, while we are on that, I need to clarify to Zach and, 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 and um, Joe Musheru that I am not Jonah. I am not a reluctant leader. I'm not being, you know, because <laughs> you are creating an impression like I'm being called to national leadership and I'm reluctant. Well, at least the bishop said that Jonah prayed. Give me time, then to pray at least. <laughs> <laughs> and then we carry on with that bit. Uh, anyway, uh, today we are celebrating digital migration. And that's another reason why I am grateful to God. I, I never thought I would live to enjoy the fruits of digital migration. It's a fact of life. When I became minister in this administration, my first assignment was at the Ministry of ICT. And I fought a war of my life uh, to migrate, uh, to move away from analog broadcasting to digital broadcasting. At that time, a lot of people, these are the challenges of public life. I'm going to tell you something else which Joe and I are going through right now, where we are facing similar challenges because people cannot see what we are trying to do. Uh, we were fought so hard about uh, you know uh, digital migration and i was saying making very basic things the world is going that way to digital broadcasting we want to make a very good use of the spectrum resources that we have so that we can expand the sector create more employment provide an opportunity for our people to develop more content and liberalize the airwaves and so on and bring everyone on board there is no way we would have actually done what we are doing today if we had not migrated if that digital migration did not succeed, there is no way you would be having a TV and radio station in Nyandara today. It's a fact of life. And now, since that time, we have over 72 TV stations in the country. And you, you heard the Director General himself here say, by next year, we will have crossed the 30 uh, uh, mark in terms of community radio stations. Forget about the private sector commercial investments. 
in the FM stations that are 60. So if you add on to about 33, by 2023, we'll be having about 93 FM stations in the country. I mean, who has that number of radio stations in Sub-Saharan Africa? And the number of people that we have employed as a result of that. Yet, we fought so hard, doggedly, and we had to go to the uh, Supreme Court because of that, uh, to, to move from analog to digital broadcasting. Now, it's going to be much easier even to move educational content. When we had challenges of corona, some schools were able to offer lessons online and children would get content online and so on. That is where the world is going, and that is where we must go. If our friends from the US here spoke to you briefly, they will tell you about something in the US called a social security number. Everyone in the US has got one number, one social security number. That number is what you use everywhere you go, in the bank, uh, if you are renting a house, if you are seeking services, and that's what you're doing. The thinking behind Huduma card and Huduma number is precisely that that we have one number. Instead of you carrying an ID card, an NHIF card, a passport, a voter's card, every, you know, all manner of cards, so that everywhere you go, you actually need almost a basket to carry cards <laughs> before you go somewhere. So we said, besides, we have the data. You know, if you go to the National Registration Bureau, your Kitambulisho data is there. If we go to the Registrar of Births and Deaths, your data is there. What we are doing as government is to bring all those data sets together and integrate them so that they are in one place. With that one number, wherever you go, if you go to hospital, that is the only thing you need to have, that card only. It has your HIV, NHIV information. You will not need to go and renew your driver's lenses. That one card alone, you will renew your driver's lenses in any Uduma center across the country. Surely, who doesn't want to go that way? Unataka card kila mali? We, we, in Makaratasi, everywhere, some of them getting lost. Yet, with that one card, if you are sick, you go to hospital in Akuru, they just take that one card, that one number. Once they key in that number, they'll get your details, they will see where you attended to a doctor last time, you were given this medicine, and so on, then they proceed. You are registered in NHIF, and so on and so forth, then they proceed. So, as a, ile vita sasa tunapiga, tunapigwa hapa na jo, ni kama ile vita ya digital migration tena. Tumeenda kotini hapo, high court has ruled against us. And as I said last time, trust me, as long as the president keeps me in this assignment, we tutapeleka na mbaka Supreme Court. Because you, because you see, you are denying our people a service. That is what's happening. People, if you talk to some of these people here, watu wengine hapo wamenyanganyo mashamba, because kuna mbutu mkora ananda kufidul things at the Ministry of Lands. Kwa sababu, uko lands, you are a different person. Uh, registrar of births and deaths, you are a different person. NHIF, you are another person. Ata kwa marriage registrar, you have other names there. Uko, sasa, I mean, why would you want to be 20 people? You are one. And you just need only one number. And that number assists you to get the services where you go. So we will stay on this. And the thinking, my job is to implement my president's vision. And my president's vision is to ensure that we digitize records and make public services easier for our people. But area kuka tangu azubui, you know, there is a kuna language jile mnajua ya ushenzi. Etifari mepotea, nunuria waze chai, zijui nini. This is what we are trying to end. So that if you need service, you go to an Uduma center. You give your card. They put it in there. They say, oh, minor commander, they key it in. The number is there. They tell you, okay, what do you want to check today? Uh, I lost my driver's lenses. They don't even give you a driver's lenses. They just go to the data set for the driver's lenses. They key in and they load on your card. You go away. And the police officers, when they meet you on the road, they have machine readers where once they put that card inside, they will see whether your driver's lenses is valid or not valid. Sasa hawa anataka tuendere kukaa. Na hiyo njia sasa ukipata pale naivasha, polisa na kuulisa. Uh, why is your driver's lenses? Mbona imezeeka? Tutataka kutoka hiyo maneno. That that is the thinking behind Huduma card. And that is why we are fighting for it. It is good for us. That time tulikuwa tunapigwa vita. Na watu wengine pale wa TV wananiambia wao tutazima TV. I told them switch them off. You will switch them back on yourselves when you have realized what needs to be done. Hatuwezi kupelekwa namna hii. A country is managed by people being serious and sincere about what needs to be done. So, so look at where we are today. You know, over 60 FM stations. And all those have employed our children. And content is being generated every day. Look at where we are today, over 72 TV stations. And all of them have employed our children. And we are expanding. 
community radio, because we migrated. Just imagine what would have happened when Corona came around if we had not migrated. How would we have communicated in the things that we wanted to do? So, so let us accept this. Technology is moving, our world is becoming modern, and our president has got very, very good ideas about this, and we back what uh, he has decided to do. Finally, I congratulate you, Bishop Karaoke. We will support you to expand uh, and go to new horizons. Uh, please increase the development of uh, content. Uh, please uh, work with governors. He says if you create a capability here to train people who can do more broadcasting, we will support you. And that is our job. Now, since the governor told me, because when we sat down, the first question I asked him, uh, governor, there's no problem of land in Nyandarwa. Why can't we give this good man a big piece of land to assist the Ajenge Kanizakubo? Watu ni wengi, wa mbingine wako huko inje. Na itachi kubiri watu wote wakio andani. And God wants more people inside. So, so on. So, as a governor, kwa viru, many promise yapa mbele ya hawa watu, na mbele ya mwenyezi mungu, kwa mba utampea shamba, mimi na hawa wenzangu, joo, na sisiri, tutakuwa watu wa kwanza, kuja kufanya mchanga, wakuchanga hiyo kaniza mpia, na hiyo nyumba mpia to expand. So that, uh, you know, uh, the Lord is worshipped. But I need to say the following two points before I sit down. We, we, we are approaching a, a, a season where usually people sometimes get excited and excitable. Uh, you know, we need Kenya today, tomorrow and always. This is our only home on earth. I want to assure you that as government and as security sector, because I am the minister in charge of security, we are going to do everything we can to ensure that we have free, fair, and peaceful elections. We will provide an environment for peaceful campaigns. We've already started preparations. Tomorrow we even have a major meeting in the morning with the inter-institutional meetings, including IBC and the others, now looking at how we are preparing uh, for the general elections. But I want to ask us to understand one thing. We have to be patient, we have to be tolerant. We are a democratic society. We have made a choice. You know, the opening words of our constitution are these, we, the people of Kenya, we have made a choice that we are going to be democratic. What that means is that we listen to each other and we work together. Disagreement or differences of opinion are not a good enough reason uh, to bring about violence and cases of uh, intolerance and restlessness. And, and let me say this, because this is what I am employed to do, and I will be true to it, and I will do my work together with my colleagues in the security sector. We will do everything humanly possible to remain objective, firm, and we will implement the law very strictly. That is why I am very happy with the regional security team in Western, because by this morning when I spoke to the regional commissioner, we already had arrested five people in related to that incident that involved the deputy president in Busia. And I have asked the security team there to look for everyone who was involved in that organization, even if they are political leaders, whether they are elected members of parliament or not, I don't care. Arrest them, we take them to court. No one is allowed to disrupt meetings, and we cannot allow those types of things to happen. Let us debate freely. You know, you don't need the government's permission to go anywhere in Kenya, as long as you are a Kenyan citizen. You don't need our permission to go anywhere. All you need to do is go and visit your friends wherever you are going to, sell your policies, work peacefully with people. These people are very smart, Kenyans, and over the years we have become intelligent. Tutakuzikiza, eh, na tutakula chakula yako kama natuletea chakula, na tutajua vile tutafanya wakati huo. But it should not involve, you know, pushing and shoving and hurting people and stoning others. We can't do that. We know what that has done to our country before when we had those kinds of jokes. We started like that in 2007, and you know where we ended. Safari he, we will not wait and procrastinate. We will act with speed and family on all those things. Our differences of opinion or differences in terms of policy or differences in terms of political affiliation is not a good enough reason to 
cause instability in the country and you know cause problems and so on and so forth. Let's not ask our people, start uh, encouraging our people to live lawless lives. Everyone has an opportunity, has a right granted by the constitution to move around and propagate their, their philosophies. If we have difference of opinion, if we have different ideas from theirs, that's fine. That's one thing, but they must be allowed to proceed and do what they have to do. Finally, for the media, and like the one we are launching here today, uh, there is that provision of the law that no minister of security wants to apply, at least in a democratic society. I know that we have the Public Order Act. I don't want to use it. And I, I pray that God enables me to do my bit and, and live without invoking it. But you know, I will also not fail to invoke it if it becomes necessary to do that. Let's not use our you know, uh, media opportunity to incite people, to propagate ethnic and you know, negative uh, uh, messages, destructive to the unity and stability of our country. Let, let us be responsible people in the things that we do. We, we are tolerant society. Even we in government are learning to be tolerant. We talk about this all the time and we tell people, you know, even when people insult us and criticize us, we normally say no amount of criticism or insult or disagreement with us is a good enough reason to deny you your opportunity to express yourself. That's how we are going to be a great country, by listening to each other. And sometimes listening even to the things we frankly would not like to listen or would rather not listen to, but Kenyans made a choice. I made a choice to be a democratic society and we're going to be democratic in the manner in which we're going to live. So I urge all of us, those community, especially community radio stations, I know there are areas where we have had to issue warnings, the areas where I've had to work with the communications authority to caution people that uh, you are headed to the red line. We will be as patient and as tolerant as possible, but you know us. I will go the whole hog if you break the law, we will shut you down without batting an eyelid. Because you see, if it's in the best interest of the country, we will do it. But uh, I pray that I don't go there. I don't have to get there. Because most of us are wonderful people. Most of our faith-based organizations are great people. We work so well. And even when we have some arguments or active moments of fellowship, we usually finally come together and then pray. And then we go out as it were. So I hope we will not get to that point. But please, we will safeguard the stability of this country jealously. And we will ensure that all of us act objectively. And finally, I've asked my colleagues in the security sector. We are being called to serve our country. This is the time we are going to be most tolerant, most patient, but most importantly, most objective in making the decisions we make. We will not take sides. We, we may ourselves not like certain things, but we don't have that luxury in the law to use our biases in making the decisions that we have to make where security matters are concerned. So we must provide a level playing uh, field, we must allow everyone to do what they have to do. And as I said, everyone who's campaigning, they're free to move around the country. You do not need the government's permission to go anywhere in Kenya, as long as you are a Kenyan citizen. Bora two, you observe the law. You don't also go there and start your own wars there. You know, start fighting people, uh, su supplying Janga and elicit bruise so that people can be excited about you and then in the process you break the law. To Takukamata, regardless of your status, we will ensure that you face the full force of the law as it were. So finally, since we came, I reserved the best for the last. Uh, you know, as a matter of tradition, since this wonderful good man here is uh, trying to put his uh, TV and radio station together, I suggest that all of you wonderful people of goodwill will join me. We give him some little support so that now he can kick off Najua Vire Kwanza in a Kwanga Kazi as it were. To support him beyond I love to endure 